It's easy to become a little besotted with Agapanthus blackjack, an impactful perennial newly introduced to our garden in early summer. Bees find it utterly irresistible too. Dark buds open to deliciously intense, densely packed purple petals, like trumpets heralding pollinator joy. We first saw it at the Chelsea Flower Show this May. It was awarded the accolade of Plant of the Year, so we are expectantly anticipating how magnificent ours has the potential to become as it matures over the next couple of years. It's not fully UK hardy, so along with our other evergreen agapanthus, we'll be wrapped in fleece and moved to a dry, sheltered place to overwinter. Our favourite time of the day to appreciate Blackjack's charms is from late afternoon when low sun rays create a vibrant stained glass effect as light streams through the petals. Foxgloves are possibly the ultimate style chameleons. In a sleek modern garden, they look impressively architectural. In a colourful cottage garden, their spars of bells convey a certain nostalgic charm. And in a shady corner with a leafy woodland feel, they help create a wilder, almost mystical aura, which is not surprising, as traditionally these flowers are associated with fairies, magic and healing. They are toxic to humans if ingested, but highly beneficial to feasting bees. As a cultivar of the native form, Sutton's apricot is biennial with leafy growth in the first year and a flower display in the second. We take care mowing the surrounding damp area of the lawn in spring as self-seeded foxglove plants can sometimes pop up and be transplanted. This shady area of the garden is close to our tiny pond and often visited by frogs. And the additional pollinator pulling power of foxgloves helps make this cool leafy spot feel even more wildlife friendly and busily alive with buzzing bumblebees. Amongst uplifting vibrant splashes of summer colour, there is always space for soul-soothing, soft, dreamy blues, and the sun-loving blue star bellflower offers the most exquisite and profuse lavender blue petals, creating floral waterfalls as stars. In its native Australia, it is perennial but mainly grown as an annual in the UK climate. Its attractive green feather foliage complements the stellar form of the flowers, which open from early July to the first frosts, attracting smaller pollinators, some proving harder to successfully film than others. One beautifully colour coordinated visitor is the holly blue butterfly. When I first came across a male posing on top of our blue star flowers, I dearly wanted to capture this most charming of images. 
But by the time I'd gone inside and grabbed the phone for a perfect blue-themed photo, the butterfly had moved on. It alighted on the far less photogenic blue plastic lid of the truck I'd been using as a repotting workstation. The wind was getting up at this point, forcing his wings to the side. A flower tumbled over him. But he was unperturbed and seemed to enjoy the moisture from damp clumps of compost. Even without blue skies, on the most grey and overcast of days, the petals of Blue Star have an enchantingly luminous quality about them, which seems to enhance the colours of flowers all around. Salvia seropetosi is a UK hardy perennial once established, bringing some magnificent magenta drama to the garden. She begins with an upright habit when small, then proceeds to lounge about in all directions as summer season progresses, probably because a pot just isn't fully equipped to contain her needs, and she desires to be an even bigger and bolder eye-catcher planted in the ground. So from that perspective, she wasn't the best candidate for a life in a container. She has greater aspirations. However, the aromatic green foliage with its light reflecting sheen and the amazing magenta flowers are a total delight, not only to us, but to skillful and long-tongued leafcutter bees who keep us entertained as they flip upside down to best access the enticing nectar within Seropetosi's flowers. As you can see from the endearing yellow undercarriage, this bee stores pollen on the underside of the abdomen. The short-tongued bumblebees must adopt a different strategy known as nectar robbing, using their strong mandibles to cut a drinking hole at the base of the flower. Hydrangeas in our garden have a mixed provenance. Some beginning life as indoor summer pot plants transplanted to the garden in autumn. One was an accidentally broken stem that rooted in damp soil, taking on a different form from its parent plant. And these cascades of pink flowers are Mophead Hydrangea Pink Lollipop, which creates a bright and bold contrast to the largely evergreen surrounding foliage. Conservationists and wildlife charities in the UK are quite scathing about Mophead Hydrangeas because they are largely sterile plants offering little for pollinators. However, in their defense, Bees and many moths use the plant for shelter in the summer, and insects can be found in the dried flower heads in winter. Insects also eat and nest with the leaves, which in turn encourages birds into the garden. These predatory crab spiders and busy ants are evidence of the valuable multi-tiered ecosystem in a mophead hydrangea. So perhaps the wildlife value of these plants deserves to be reassessed.
a climate we love for its ethereal lavender blue petals, which unfurl from bottle stopper buds into flowers with charmingly recurved tips like flower fairy hats, is Clematis Betty Corning. Pleasingly pretty, with a light fragrance as sweet as her looks, this plant scrambles elegantly through our climbing rows and is trained to trail over the arbour. This is a Viticella group Clematis, so we hard prune in late winter or early spring down to a pair of buds around a couple of feet above ground. The plant was discovered in 1932 growing on a porch in Albany, New York State by its namesake eminent North American horticulturalist Elizabeth Corning, who was an enthusiastic advocate of the therapeutic value of public gardens and the restorative qualities of plants. There's just something about pom-poms that makes the heart happy. And for us, this includes the box balls punctuating our lavender beds. And round ripening apples. Tiny spherical fruits, like satellites, developing on Corners Cooza and the luxuriant heads of Agapanthus blackjack. In early summer, we appreciate the planet-sized starbursts of Allium Globemaster. But size isn't everything, and although this mauvey pink late summer Allium Millennium has smaller bobble hat sized bursts of florets, it's still a delight in the garden, wonderful for pollinators, and performs well in a pot, although you will get an even bigger display in the ground, where it is drought tolerant once established. Pot plants will need watering. Our trick during dry spells is to plug the drainage holes with blue tack or sit pots in a dish so that every drop of water we provide is taken up, and then only water is necessary. This works for all container plants. Just remember to remove the blue tack or the dish once the rains return. With graceful flowers offering easy access for pollinators, this annual Cosmos white sensation is the dwarf form, growing to around a metre high and beginning life germinating on the windowsill indoors. We usually pinch out the tips of our windowsill Cosmos seedlings to encourage a bushy habit. But this year we experimentally left white sensation to grow taller so that flowers hover above homegrown cosmos xanthos and rubenza.
evergreen agapanthus African Skies is for me the embodiment of the summer season in our garden, with her dreamy blue beauty and generous flowers humming with bees. She is surely summer's very sister. In winter, this evergreen needs protection in a sheltered dry spot, yet will flourish through even a wet English summer. African Skies was the first Agapanthus we introduced to the garden. She has outgrown her pot and been divided multiple times over the years, and we love the fact that her descendants are flowering in the gardens of friends and family all over the country. Meanwhile, we were enjoying the Agapanthus plants that have been generously shared with us. July is almost over, but the garden continues to offer up surprises, like these intriguingly variegated leaves on a self-seeded nemesia. The buds on Agapanthus lavender haze are tense with the countdown to the August floral firework display. There are still cheery ladybird poppies flowering in slightly shadier corners, always making us smile. Stately Japanese anemone September charm, almost six feet high at the back of the border, has yet to unfurl its poised clusters of pale buds. The baby crickets have matured and are joined by grasshoppers. And hundreds of buddlia florets are beginning to flood with colour across each heavy panicle of the plant. To everyone who enjoys our garden videos and supports our channel, thank you so much for joining us here. Until we meet again soon, we wish you all flowerful times and nature-soothed minds.